Welcome to the Crush It in Sales podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Van Fleet. This podcast focuses on the intersection of sales, leadership, and personal development. Now let's get ready to dig in and crush it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Crush It in Sales podcast. I am super excited that you are joining me and my very special, special, special guest, Maggie Mongan, this week. Because as you've all been listening, I have been talking for months and posting for months about the brilliant breakthroughs for the small business owner book series that Ryan and I are co-authors in. It's the fourth annual international best-selling book series. And Maggie is the mastermind guru, that's what I tend to call her, behind this whole series. So just a short little thing about Maggie, because this is me introducing her to this audience, and y'all haven't heard from her yet, so this will be super fun. Maggie is a master business coach. She's a strategist. She's a trainer, and she's recognized as a thought leader of small business. And she has been bolstering the small business sector for almost 20 years, so Outside of this book series, she is just an amazing business coach, and she knows her stuff. So welcome, Maggie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love that introduction. Bolstering. I'm adding that to my copy. Thank you. Yes, you should, for sure, because it's so true. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited to be on this side of the microphone. I know. Is it kind of weird for you? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll we'll be we'll go easy. So. Oh yeah, right. Okay, let's see if that really happens. <laughs> yes, yes. So, do you just want to dive right in? We can dive right into the book if if that sounds good to you. And yeah, you can tell be. us the story about how you created our number one best selling book series. Let's roll. Okay. Well, you know, since that is how we met, that sounds like a perfect place for us to start. Awesome. And I'd love to share with your listeners that I'm stoked about this because crushing sales doesn't always look like we think it does. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pre-work that needs to happen in sales before the actual transaction of the sale. So, and I know you understand that fully, Melinda. So what you know, you asked was, tell us a little bit about how you created this really cool number one best-selling book series. And I'll say, well, let's start because I have six steps that I'm going to share and they are all teachables for sales. Ready? Yes, please. Okay. So about 10 years into coaching small business owners and entrepreneurs, I noticed that there was a big gap in the small business sector, which is my marketplace. And to be clear, just to help everybody understand, small business is defined by the Small Business Administration as 100, I'm sorry, as one to 499 employees. Mm. Dollars aren't the focus in this definition. It's employees, the size of the business. I don't think many people know that. That's amazing, yeah. They don't, but it's in the introduction of our book. (laughs) Yep. And more specifically, we tend to, I think people tend to look at small business as what's defined as micro business. And micro business is defined as one to nine employees officially. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say one to 16 employees. It really doesn't matter. Okay. But small business has a problem. It's a huge problem. They're being underserved, okay? And the first step in sales is to identify a problem or a gap. That's the first step in business, and it's the first step in sales. Mm -hmm. What is the problem or gap? So the second step naturally would progress to do research to assure the problem or gap is a real need and there's a large enough marketplace. Mm. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so now here's here's something crazy. took me a couple of years to really understand what was 
and wasn't happening in the marketplace for entrepreneurs and small business owners. And the reason why it took a little while to figure out is <laughs> it wasn't a small feat at all is because the marketplace is actually very huge. 99% of all business is considered small business. 99%. Wow. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, it really is actually. So when we hear, you know, businesses, those big businesses that take up all of the headlines. Yeah. Like the they're only 1% of all the business. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That okay. definitely puts some perspective out there for the need. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but that's why there was a challenge and it took a while to figure out, you know, is this a real need? And yeah, well, yeah, it was large enough marketplace. Yeah. But for a lot of people, they don't know if they have a large enough marketplace with whatever they think the problem is that needs to be solved, right? Sure. So while you're identifying that, you need to make sure that when you're out there looking about the real need, the size of the need, the other part of that research is to... Um, excuse me, to explore what is the better way to provide a favorable solution for your customer. Now, I had all sorts of ways that we could have done this and got experts that are true experts working with small business owners. But I wanted the better way, a favorable solution. So then after I thought I had it, I proclaimed Step three, I proclaimed the problem or the gap. And I noticed that there was a gap between true experts and small business owners who are being underserved. And again, I think that's shameful because it's 99% of business. Mm -hmm. And I, as you said, a thought leader for small business, I truly believe that small business is the backbone and the accelerant of our economy. Mm -hmm. So much so that I dedicated the book to it. I said to my husband, hey, honey, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, it shouldn't be. And I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what I saw in the marketplace was there's small business owners and entrepreneurs who have great needs. And then there's true experts, not experts that are, are selling last century's techniques or they've done it once. Um, and it's vanilla, and it's just rehashed stuff. Mm -hmm. I call those unexperts. You don't care how good they are at the marketing. You care how good they are at what you're hiring them to help you with, what your gap is in your business. Mm -hmm. So I saw that this was a huge gap. But then again, now that I know what the gap is, the problem, I need to go conduct more research. Step four. What is the appropriate solution for the customer's preference, not yours? Mm -hmm. Very key. Yep. It's all about them. It's mm -hmm. never about us. And the more we make it about them, the better we win, right? Yes. Okay. So this is where it's important to be doing the experiment. In case you haven't figured out, I've been telling you how to do an experiment all along. Because I know business is a grand experiment. And if anybody would ever tell you that sales and marketing is totally not an experiment, give them my number. <laughs> <laughs> give them my number. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I definitely think they probably need to check it too. <laughs> like just because everything sometimes in life can be an experiment, right? So. And that's why I say embrace the experiment and yeah. especially in sales and marketing, it's totally an experiment. Okay. So <clears throat> let's, let's go on a little bit. We got to conduct research to figure out what the appropriate solution is for the customer's preference. To my surprise, it turned out it was book. Hmm. And did you determine that by just by asking around over time? Like, I'm curious, just a little more. I did a lot of research. Um, overall, I started talking with a lot of people, and then I conducted surveys with, mm -hmm. cust with my customers over the years, mm. as well as um, 
other people that I knew and peers. And I asked my peers to share the survey with their customers if they were small business owners or entrepreneurs. Mm. And, and then I had a great deal of data to pull from so I could truly be working with what was factual instead of what I perceived and assumed. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So now we're still in step four. Okay. So here it is a book. <laughs> <laughs> so the book sort of just became the brand of our anchor. And, and, and I'm going to explain that in a moment because it's actually pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> so here we have this book thing happening. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to write a book, but I don't want it to just be me. I want it to be other experts uh-huh. that are good. And I knew who they were already because I, I've been doing my gig for about 20 years, right? right? And before this, I was one of the nation's go-to executive recruiters for what I specialized in. So I knew how to vet people. I had already been doing that for about 10 years prior to all of this for a living. So here we have our book. And then we added a mobile app mm-hmm. and a podcast both before volume one was released. And everyone will say, well, why did that happen? Because the research didn't reveal it. Well, the research sort of did reveal it, but I didn't know we were going to do that. We started with a book, but the marketplace revealed that they wanted a book that was designed like a guide, and then they wanted to be fed continuously. Oh, gotcha. Hence the app and, and the podcast is always, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now here comes step five. Uh, Today, we all know that business needs profitability perhaps more than ever in in 2020. Um, Everybody gets that. But in order to have profitability, you need to have really strong sales. In order to have strong sales, you need to have a good sales process and consistently show up in your marketplace. Right? Right. Right. Okay, so the tip for you, everyone, is to get invited to the big kids' dinner table. It's almost uh, the holidays, so I'll share that. The big kids' dinner table, that's the adult table. The way you do that is you show up consistently in the marketplace and you continue to refine what you are working on. Consistency and refinement helps you with your sales and marketing. And even if your numbers are low, don't stop. Mm -hmm. People are watching. I'm always amazed at people coming up to me and say, Maggie Mongan, I see you everywhere. (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) And that was, that was like, one month after I started really engaging on social media. So that's always a funny to me. Okay, so that's step five. You ready for six? I am. Success! Yes! All right, if you've done one, two, three, four, and five, Uh because you did your homework, you're going to be successful. In our case, success looked like volume one in the series, as well as the others since, but volume one had multiple number one best-selling ranks. Mm. And I, this thrilled me because the, the intention of the book was to help small business owners win big in the 21st century with fresh perspectives, mm-hmm. not last century's techniques and strategies that they were using. Right. So I, I got stoked on this because it was like, oh my gosh, here it is. Right. And I mean, most people don't get number one or have a successful launch when you can think of it in regards to courses or, or anything like right out of the gate. So that's amazing. Kudos. And it's because they don't do all the Mm pre-work. They, they try to hack success. And when you hack success, that's exactly what you do. You hack your success rate. Mm -hmm. So here, here we were, we rocked it. And here's the fun fact about all of this. I didn't know this was going to become a series. I didn't know it was going to become a number one. I didn't know we were going to have an app, a podcast, and eventually a summit. I didn't know any of that. I just wanted to fill a true gap in the marketplace. And guess what? It was so big, 
in real and the solution was provided that was so accurate because I did all the research and I decided to consistently refine everything. And now it's for four years. We're on volume four now. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess I assumed so bad me that when you went into this, you thought this could be a annual series and I had never asked you for clarity. So that's really cool. You just kind of like went with it. You took action, girl. I love it. (laughs) Well, because I saw what the research was. Thank you. Yeah. And and thank you for that. Yeah. And and it was there and it was undeniable. Mm -hmm. Research is our friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I was researching something over the weekend and it was actually really eye opening. um, And and it gave me more content for future podcasts and writing. So it actually kind of evolved. So to your point, like you, you do this research and you set out on this path and then the, that what becomes unveiled to you can just really open opportunities. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my six steps. That's I how we did it. it. That is amazing. So why do we release the book in November? Oh, well, this, this is a fun fact. National Entrepreneur Month is November. And oh, you're kidding. Don't know oh my that. gosh. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Very, you know what? Someone told me that you should be uh, aware of all of those like holidays. I'll call them holidays, right? Because yeah, you can really maximize potential with understanding some of these different events and when they happen. So that's really cool. Very cool. If, and this is research again. If they're <laughs> relevant to you, yeah, utilize it. Like we initially were going to release it in January for the volume one. Mm-hmm. And when I learned that National Entrepreneur Month was November, I said, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> top of mind marketing, get in the groove. <laughs> Did you rub your hands together like, oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And everyone, really cool. Everyone said, okay, we can streamline this. We can accelerate it. And, and we were panting as we crossed the finish line because we moved the time label, a timeline up so much. Mm. Yeah, no, that's good. But it, it, you made it work and now you marched to that, so to speak. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And now we, and I don't know much, I'm going to be really honest here. So you can say, you know, shame on me as a co-author, but I don't know much about the summit. That's in May because you and I really didn't meet until like probably early June, right? So can you tell, tell me about the summit and why is it held in May and any sort of scoop on that? Sure. The summit is uh, the, the brilliant business. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> we have so many bees in our brand. I was gonna make sure say, get this you right. sound like me in the beginning when I started doing like the videos. I was like, <laughs> I gotta get this down. Brilliant, great. Right? Yeah, because you're right. And then you have your subtitle. So no, you, this is this is just the annual brilliant business summit. So hey, thank you. It's <laughs> let me tell you why it's in May. <laughs> now, I feel, now I don't feel bad. You made me feel human. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. We're all human. Oh, I make the most mistakes. It's funny how I let my inner doofus appear for everyone to experience. <laughs> we, we all need to let those inner doofuses fly. So. Yeah, totally. Good. Totally. And they're actually really funny, I think. Um, okay, so our summit is an annual summit that happens in May. Now, why May? And it's the first week in May because that's Small Business Week. Oh, I see all these things. I really do need to do some homework on when all these um, small business, like all these weeks and holidays are. Okay. Well, that's what you got me for. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So um, this year, because of the wonderful pandemic that we've been experiencing, they, they canceled small business week in May and they moved it to November. So it, it's a little different this year, but we went ahead and we still held it because we had all our promotions set up for May and everybody needed a boost in May because we were all getting pretty beat up by then. Mm-hmm. So um, we hold a virtual summit and it's for a week 
and we have not all of our authors, but some of the authors come back and do presentations and or interviews um, regarding their topic that they wrote about. And it didn't matter what it was, but how it relates this year for 2020, we focused on profitability. Mm -hmm. We decided that back in December that we would start with our first performance pillar in the book's framework of profitability. So the cool thing is everybody's going to have a chance to experience that yet before the year is over. We're going to do a replay on it. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. And then um, you don't know about the summit because you're a new author and we have all of our number one best-selling business authors train on it because they're the true experts and they got it dialed in. So guess what? What? May 2021, you'll be there. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> I get like an official big like wedding invitation in the mail. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, maybe not that fancy. <laughs> You're part of the community of brilliant practicing experts, baby. Write it down now, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot to be asking, Missy. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, that and and this is another thing that you know you said, gee, I need to pay attention to this. Yes, we do need to pay attention to these days or months, these these like holidays or focuses yeah. for a day that are relevant to our business. Not all of them, but the ones that are, because then we're top of mind and we can help people. And that's that's free marketing visibility and opportunity when you say, hey, did you know that it's National Entrepreneur Month if you work with them? Mm -hmm. And they're going to go, wow. But then you better follow it up with what are you going to offer them? Right. Right. What are you going to do? Yeah, we got that dialed in. Yeah, that's amazing. Love it. And thank you for your help on that. So now <laughs> I know and I already have it. <laughs> like, yep, the book. There we go. <laughs> Sets of marketing tips all over the place. We're just <laughs> dropping them everywhere. Yeah, no, that's a really great tip. So I do hope that people that are listening and really working on building their businesses do that. You know, go to the calendar. I'm sure it's all online. You can Google it and find whatever event, holiday, however you want to bucket it is relevant to their business and start Amen. preparing for it. So that's a great tip. Thanks, Maggie. I love it. You, you got it. Yeah. All right. So what else do you want to know? Yeah. So this is what I'm, I'm dying to know. So because I love the points that you covered, I think they're amazing. And I took notes. So thank you. Thank you. But you didn't clearly wake up one day and just say, I'm going to write a best-selling book series. So how did, tell me about how this molded and now, you know, it's in high demand and what you've learned along the way, because there has to be some really great nuggets of learnings between all four. I'm going to say four because we're almost to launch date. So <laughs> give me the scoop. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, it's absolutely funny because I am laughing so hard. You just wake up one day and say, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly steps one through six proved uh, different. Right. <laughs> That you didn't do that. So <laughs> yeah. okay, okay. So um, yeah, everything starts far before we believe it does. And my journey actually started when I was born into poverty. Mm -hmm. Now, my parents might not appreciate me sharing that, but it is a truth. And because of that, I had a great work ethic. And I learned how to be independent at a young age. We hunt off the land, we fished out of the water, and we grew our own vegetables and fruits. That's, that, I don't know how it gets any more real than that. Yeah, and yeah that's you, real. And you learn systems and cycles, and you, you learn to pay attention to the little nuances that make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Do you see how that applies to some of what I've already shared? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then um, number, uh, I wrote them down, consistency and refinement. There it is. So um, I married young. I married a Marine. We just celebrated 38 years together. Yes. Yeah, and that was a lesson in leadership and systems. Mm -hmm. Then I ran some pizza joints. 
and uh, uh, ran a store out of uh, retail, one of the successful athletic stores. After that, I decided I didn't want to work that hard for a few dollars, so I went back to school as an adult, picked up a couple of degrees and a master's in management while raising two kids and working 60 hours a week. Oh, those retail days. Oh my gosh. Been there. <laughs> Lived it. But no kids though. So you get extra bonus. Oh, well, I don't need extra bonuses, <laughs> but thanks. Okay. So that point is about always be learning, always mm-hmm. be collecting data. Okay. But yep. it wasn't easy at all. It was a struggle to do all of that. Yeah. And, and that's what I learned that it really is important, as Brendan Bouchard says, to honor the struggle. Mm-hmm. And I allowed that struggle to refine me and what I knew and how I show up. Mm-hmm. And then, I, um, you know, I, I did a couple other things. I, I was a CEO for a very early adopting tech firm for nothing other than building what we now call apps. Wow. Yeah. And um, apps are the 21st century website. Yes. So were they called apps when you... No. Okay. <laughs> like, that's where I'm like, whoa, really? <laughs> no, no. It's, it, nothing. it would look somewhat like what we have now, but how it was developed was completely different. So, yeah, it's, it's very, very amazing. And, and that was a long time ago. So one of the things that I am is I'm a true collaborator. Mm-hmm. And other than my business uh, blog that I started about 10 years ago, my first writing in a big collaborative project was with uh, somebody who had their doctorate and we published and we were published in a professional journal and invited to present that article on how to optimize business and leadership performance at a scholars conference in Vienna, Austria. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <clears throat> so it it was really cool and humbling because here's all of the professors in the world and they're listening to what I have to say about how to optimize business and leadership performance. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is going to impact generations. And I, I was really excited about that. But it really comes down to how do we, how do we have big impact? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I did was I realized early on that I came here to play big, as I'm sure you can tell by with what I've shared so far. Right. And um, I knew I was here to make a big splash. And help, you know, I've helped many thousands of small business owners with great offerings because they've done their research and they did the development like what I shared so they could shine really brightly. And I helped them simplify their strategies and align their options so they could optimize their leadership and business performance. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that I really did that people have not been doing is I've helped small business owners build profitable and peaceful businesses mm-hmm. because you can have both. And I've refined that over the years. You know, I have a proprietary model. It's called the four performance pillars for small business success. And that's how the book is formatted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's on profitability, people, productivity, and peacefulness. And I'm here to tell you, everything you do in your business can get put into those four categories. Mm-hmm. I know because I've refined it. Yeah. So the tip is for everybody that don't give up too soon because business may not always be easy. And this is one of the quotes that I'm known for, but it can be simple. And I see far too many people give up too soon, like right on the cusp of it, Mm -hmm. right on the cusp of it. So here's a fun fact I'll share with everyone, because I think right about now you're probably getting that it's time to embrace the experiment of business. Mm-hmm. So the fun fact is this number one best-selling author a couple times over 
does not read books for pleasure. I read and research all day long for training and, and with my clients uh-huh. and staying on top of my game. So I don't read for pleasure. What I do is my downtime is movies. Oh, okay. And I love watching movies because I always see business strategies uh-huh. in the movies. It doesn't matter what it is. And because I have this really cool gift to do that, uh-huh. I created something in my blog, a, a section, a category called business movie reviews. So you can take any movie and I have them from like Pirates of the Caribbean to older things to newer things to even Monsters, Inc. And I, I tell you what the business strategies are and they're not all of them. There's so many I see, but and go watch them through a different lens and you'll go, oh my gosh, like, Most people don't believe me that the very opening scene in Monsters, Inc., Melinda, Uh is a business strategy. Huh. Okay. Now I'm going to be watching. (laughs) Brian's going to be like, what are you watching? So (laughs) first, first go ahead and read the blog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Step one, read blog. (laughs) Right. Right. Wow. Wow. and and then watch the movie and you're just going to be blown away because then you'll be thinking about how you can apply it to your business, okay? Mm-hmm. And I, I have that from Christmas specials through uh, everything. I, I do a full spectrum. And if it's something that's not family appropriate, I let people know that it may not be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that I put anything okay, out there like, that's risky. Can take us down a whole other path, Maggie. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't do anything risque. It's just, you know, some things aren't appropriate for children. Oh, I getcha. So yeah, do you, you know. do this often now? Like, would you say this is kind of, I mean, this is obviously a fun fact. I did not know about you. So I'm processing all this. <laughs> do you do this like now? It's kind of like a, a hobby. Like once a week, is this like where you're like, oh, let's look at this and you write a blog about it? Like I, I'm... I'm new to this hobby. Very cool. Which is very cool. That's why I'm curious. Well, it's a fun way to teach, right? Yeah. Totally. And, yeah. And um, the answer is I, currently there's about 70, 70 uh-huh. blogs up on my site that are movies, oh. business movie reviews. Um, I, I had an accident two years ago and I've been recovering from a traumatic brain injury. So my writing capabilities haven't been so hot. That part of my brain just started working recently. So I'll be back to it. But I've, I've had like 10 years worth of blog posts out there, over a thousand yeah. in general and 70 business movie reviews. So if you go there yeah. to um, my blogs on brilliantbreakthroughs.com, you would just look for the category business movie reviews and you'll be all set for holiday watching. I'll tell oh you that. <laughs> This is really cool. What a fun fact you just shared with myself and the whole audience. That's really awesome. Okay, wow. so so we're rocking it and probably way over, right? <laughs> yeah, but I still want you to share. And, you know, I, I've had a couple of the co-authors on the podcast. So, you know, you can make it into more of a tidbit. But definitely share about um, the series that, you know, I'm in. (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay, let's do that. Share a little bit about the authors. That would be cool. (laughs) Okay, tidbits, tidbits, tidbits. Let's start at the beginning. This book is titled Brilliant Breakthroughs for the Small Business Owner. And the subtitle is where the juice is. It's fresh perspectives. Remember I said 21st century? Mm -hmm. Fresh perspectives on profitability, people, Productivity and finding peace in your business. How do you like that? I love it. Okay. And it's an unusual book because it has real information in the introduction. It's quite advantageous for everybody to read the introduction because I drop all sorts of wisdom bombs like what I just did here about business ownership and entrepreneurship and I even take you back to how... America was funded on it. So, you know, that's a real trip and a half. But what I would love for everybody to do is read the introduction first, 
because the book is designed as a guide. Mm. Okay. And, and it's a tool, like it, it's a tool, like a reference tool, I would say as well. I don't know if I'm using the. That's exactly what my initial intention was when I started fighting volume one authors. I said that it's a resource guide, a reference tool. I went through all sorts of words like that. Mm-hmm. And, th- and they're like, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> and they're, eh, for the most part, I think they're glad they did because it's a lot of work. Okay, but let's talk about what's in volume four, which releases on 11 11 2020. And that's the volume you contributed to. Yes. All right. Um, again, the book is broken into the four performance pillars. So the first one is profit. And in chapter one, we have Anne Mank, who talks about your financial freedom trail. And she does something so cool. Via a story, she takes you through financial mindset, strategy, and tactics for yourself and your business. And I know you've already read it. And you were telling me how you were really impressed by it. Yeah, it's just a really great spin on a topic that most people would think is like watching paint dry. So I highly recommend it. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Even that's, though we and all that, love money. Like <laughs> that's what's so funny, right? If you think about it, but yeah. It is ironic, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> it's a very weird, like, you know, double end of the sword, however you want to put it too. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I love like Anne's approach because I haven't seen anybody in the financial realm, address it like how she did with the story. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, so let's go to chapter two. Chapter two is by Mark Bader, and he's talking about hiring people for your small business, which is even more important than if you're a bigger business because you don't have money to spare typically, right? Mm-hmm. And and we start out small, so making sure that we get the right people into the right positions is important. But he talks about This isn't just go post a job and pray that you find the right person. He talks about this being a long-term strategy to find indispensable key talent. And I will tell you, he's an executive recruiter, and I did about a decade in that world. He's the guy to listen to about how to add people to your small business, Mm -hmm. and big business for that matter. It's the same, but it's a long-term strategy. And that's, that's where it's an atypical and a fresh perspective for all of us. Mm-hmm. And he walks it through perfectly. So let's cruise on to performance pillar number two. And we have a returning author to the series, Susan McCustion. And she wrote about the hidden cost of doing business. And again, this is about people. So she says... Um, How do you do a better version of diversity and inclusion? Because the way you're doing it now, if you're even doing it, you're losing money. If you're not doing it, you're losing money. Mm -hmm. If you are doing it the traditional way, you're losing money. So she says, move to the 21st century and consider what she has as a proprietary process of the resilient profitability process for compassionate diversity. I don't know if I need to say more than that, yeah, how much this is needed, right? Yeah. And, it, and if you don't get that, then I, I kind of am worried for you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's I'm move on to chapter four. <laughs> 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 chapter four, we have um, a really cool topic. Again, people focus, but it's going to be all about your bottom line. It's, it's Shalini Nag and Shalini, um, I should say Dr. Shalini Nag, she is brilliant, mm-hmm. addresses business conversations and how we still aren't getting them right. And mm-hmm. I'll own it. I made a big bad one this week that I had to clean up yesterday. So um, she comes in and she says, it really erodes and impedes upon your people and business performance, which ultimately means your profitability, okay? And she's like, we got to get this people thing right. We have to be better at conversations. And she has some beautiful proprietary framework in there that is so easy. Anybody could use it. And I encourage you to take a look at her chapter and follow her steps because if you do this, you'll get better. And don't be discouraged because it takes a lot of practice. Yeah. 
Yeah. Lots of things take practice though. And that's what I try to mention. I'll put that lightly. I talk about it more than often. It's, yeah. You have to practice. You have to put in the work and make the changes, but yeah, I love Shalini's steps. They're amazing. Okay. So we got her. Now let's move to the imposter syndrome. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay. Another returning author who comes back is Mike Raber. And Mike reveals his journey about how the imposter syndrome has overshadowed his ability to impact as an influencer. And he reveals it all. He wrote this chapter specifically so other small business owners don't have to go through as long of a learning curve in this as he has. Mm -hmm. So I know everybody's going to dive into that one. Yeah, and he's such a good storyteller too. So I want to have that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yes, he is. And he has a couple of great stories in there, as well as secrets <laughs> and research. We like research. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number six, Dr. Dennis Hill. Uh, Dennis is recognized globally for his expertise. So that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Some Several of our authors are. I, I should say, essentially, all of our authors are. What am I saying? Huh, we all are. How do you like that? Um, Dennis talks about integrated systems. Small business would probably call that as tech stacks, you know, all of the tech that we use to keep our business operating. And he shares that we need to be very comprehensive in our approach to how we're using tech and to make sure that all of our systems are integrated instead of isolated islands of capabilities so we can boost our productivity and and that ultimately will impact our profit as well but he focuses on the, the productivity side of it and it's a big power move if you can get this right just about everything else moves into a state of seamlessness for your operations nice yes now we have chapter seven Mm, all about building confidence from the ground up. And that, <laughs> does that sound familiar to you? Really, a little, maybe. <laughs> okay. I love this because uh, Melinda and her husband, Ryan Van Fleet, are our first couple co-authoring for us. So it was really cool to get the perspective of two people coming into one chapter and talking about their expertise. And they have building confidence from the ground up dialed in. They share how they had to do that in their respective businesses and now how they're coming together to do a joint business in addition to their still managing their own and making all that goodness happen there. But they talk about the whole success story of how that happened, why that happened, and some of the experiences that they've gone through in business. And I love it because it's practical. Yes. And we just want people to know that, you know, we all go through these things and you can figure it out and keep going. And there you go, that all those experiences build your confidence. So yeah, we did. We just wanted it practical and relatable. So... <laughs> You delivered it. Good, thank you. you. You delivered it. Um, and thank you for that. And then our last performance pillar is peace. And chapter eight is written by Dr. June Shimizu. And Dr. June, he dials it in and he says, it's time for you to discover your quantum nature because after all, your performance and your businesses is key and they're connected. Uh, I've been looking for somebody to write about our self-care, our performance as a human, because we are the number one asset in our business. Mm -hmm. I don't like saying we're an asset, but we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're human and we're a human asset. Um, and if if we're not functioning well, our business isn't functioning well. And he, he breaks it down. He gives us five very simple, overlooked, actionable steps. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then the last chapter is... <laughs> <laughs> is, is really fun for me. It's my chapter. 
And it's how valuing your values adds value to your business. And I have to tell you, I love this because this is where I got to meld two of my favorite worlds together. Some of you may not know, I am an ordained peace minister. And um, I melded that with being a CEO together to write this chapter. And what amazed me about values is there's an enormous amount of research out there, but not enough people are talking about it. Yeah. So um, I knew it was important from a different angle. And when I started doing the research, the top business CEOs in the world say that this is their secret sauce for success. And this is where they put most of their effort. And yet, so many guides that are helping small businesses don't touch this with a 10-foot pole because it's more about the art of business instead of the science of business. Mm. So, in the chapter, I share what the research reveals, what we can learn from big business. And I, I think typically small business is now leading big business, but in this one, they're still leading. And um, how small business owners can use this as a strategy, operation-wise, sales and marketing-wise, as they develop their brand. And are the small business owners that I interviewed talk about that and how they've used it. And then at the very end, we share how to begin your inquiry to find out more about your values. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I loved your chapter and I really related to it. I think back to my my corporate days, we would, you know, have a meeting. I'm just going to make this up as a, a rough example because I don't remember everything. It's been so long, but have a meeting like once a year and they put the flash, the mission statement, right? Oh, the mission statement up on the big screen. But that was it. Like there was never any other um, discussion or even ingrained in the culture and nothing that would ever go back to the values of the company. So I think that all of this, your whole chapter is just really amazing. And I hope that everyone enjoys it and really uses it as a tool to build their strategy. You said the right word strategy. Yeah. It's living. It shouldn't just be a phrase that's slammed on the wall somewhere yeah. and nobody knows what it really means. It should be lived into every day in, in, every aspect of your business. That's one of the invitations I share in the chapter is once you figure this out, now how do you infuse it into every single thing you do? Right. Right. But again, circling back to Chalonet and what we were just talking about there briefly is it takes practice. So you have to like do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything is experiment and practice. And Come on. Right. We're tying this all together. And that was not even planned. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and even people, you know, they, they're like, oh, well, I'm trying to meditate and I keep screwing it up. I said, so what do you do? And they said, well, then I start getting upset with myself because... I didn't clear my mind. I said, so now you just clear, you just added that in your mind instead of just saying, oh. do over. <laughs> Practice this again. <laughs> yeah. Do over and, and hit it, you know? Okay. So it's, it's really funny. Practice, yes, mm -hmm. and experiment. Yeah. Cool. So true. Yeah. Well, I love this. Thank you so much. You have been an amazing guest and I'm so grateful and I'm grateful to you in general for us being part of your book series and just getting to know you over these months and work with you. It's just been an absolute pleasure. I don't even think words can really express that, but to mm -hmm. wrap up, how can everyone get in touch with you? Like how, you know, tell us, tell us the goods on how to get in touch with you and where they can look for the book as well on 11.11. Okay. Well, this is really simple. Um, first of all, my website is Brilliant Breakthroughs. That's with an S, Brilliant Breakthroughs. I'd like people to have more than one. Um, <laughs> BrilliantBreakthroughs.com. Okay. And that's where you can find my blog. And, and I don't know when this is exactly coming out, but I'm in the middle of a new website releasing probably, well, it'll be right before the book releases. So who knows what you're going to get, the old version or the new version. <laughs> so that's one way you can get a hold of me. The second way is you can download our app, which is go to your app store. It's a free download and it's Brilliant Biz, B-I-Z, book. Brilliant Biz, book. And when you download that, 
Um, you'll see everything about a book, um, all of our authors from all of our volumes. And then there's a place called Ask an Expert. You'll find my name, Maggie Mongan, there. And you can click on that and send me an email. And uh, I'll answer anything that you have. That's so a take really it. cool feature, by the way. Isn't it? Like, how do you get access to experts for free, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's a really, really cool feature. Kudos. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and then regarding the book, because that's the other thing that you would like to share for your audience, is right now everybody can go to brilliantbizbook.com. I'll say that again, brilliantbizbook.com. And when you go there, sign up for the 100 free tips for small business success, which all of our authors that I just shared with you created. And then once that lands in your inbox from Brilliant Breakthroughs, uh, we'll send you another message or two between now and release day to let you know where to go on 11.11 to go get your digital book for only 99 cents. Awesome. How do you like that? Isn't that cool? 99 Very cents? Cool. Yay. <laughs> and, and we love it because we are really focused on helping you shine brightly over the next couple of weeks and throughout the new year. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the opportunity to go ahead and share some of the things um, about how to do business a little better. Yeah. And, and just um, remember, don't give up too soon. Yeah. And, Stay and with it. It is. It's so true. You hear all these stories all the time. And, and, you know, we could talk even more about this, but just to put that, put this little premise out there, most people don't ever share how long it takes. So that's actually what's missing in the piece, right? If people shared how long it took to get to their level of success, that would inspire others to keep going. So I appreciate you starting that conversation and hopefully people start to think about that a little bit. So... Hey, Melinda, I don't know if you have an opening where we could come back and talk about that. I would love to. Yeah. Because I have longevity. I've seen what's come and gone mm -hmm. and what you're exactly talking about. And I'd be happy to, in a more compact conversation, <laughs> yeah. share yeah. a little wisdom on that. Yeah. And some examples. All right. Maggie's coming back for podcast number two. <laughs> I just invited myself back, didn't I? <laughs> Because it would have happened anyway. So I love it. Taking action, putting it out there. It's all good. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's always fun to chat with you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And let's, let's go get this book in the hands of every small business owner. Okay. Yes. I love it. Everyone is going to love it as well. All great authors and all great chapters. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.